Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. What am I think? What am I think? You're listening to Popeye News Links. This is the Admiral Tibet who I represent. And remember, the time is so serious. Contankerous and dangerous. This is Popeye News Links. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. Now, let me just take time out to big up the tire warehouse management and staff at Beckford Street in Savannah Lamar in the parish of Westmoreland. Richie, Rye, and the whole crew. Enough respect. In today's journey, we are heading towards Lilliput in the parish of St. James. Remember that we are heading to the east. Continue to sit back. Continue to relax and continue to enjoy this journey with me. Now, two Bahamian nationals, they are facing serious criminal charges. One of them, his name is Dave Omar Johnson. He is 27 years old and he is said to be a land developer. He is living at Nassau in Bahamas, but he was staying locally at Nelson Close Road at the Meadows of Irwin in the parish of St. James. Listen to this now. I'm going to tell you about one, and then I'm going to tell you about the other one. Listen to this. On Wednesday night, October 25, the operators of the Eclipse Bar along the Big Bridge Main Road in the parish of Westmoreland, they securely locked up the bar and went away. When they returned yesterday morning, about 10 o'clock, it was realized that the bar, it was broken into. Hoodlums, they pry open a window to the front of the bar and entered. The hoodlums, they stole two poker machine boxes and a quantity of liquor and made good their escape. We are told that yesterday afternoon, about minutes after 1 o'clock, a team of police officers from the St. James Division Acting on intelligence, they carried out a raid at a house at the meadows of Irwin where Dave Johnson and others were staying. The house was searched and the two poker machine boxes that were stolen in Westmoreland was found in an apartment that Dave occupied. As a result, Dave was taken into police custody and he was handed over to the Westmoreland police and he has since been charged for shot breaking and larceny and receiving stolen property. The St. James Police, they have charged Dave Johnson and three others for scamming related charges. The others are Vernal Wims, he is 24 years old and he is also a Bahamian. Felicia Thomas, she is 24 years old and she is living at the Meadows of Irwin and Chantal Grant, she is 28 years old. It is said that Chantal is a travel agent and she's living at Riverside District in the parish of Hanover. It is alleged that the police officers, they seized lead sheets and other lateral scamming paraphernalia in the house that they were staying. So they were charged and they will be going to the courts shortly. This next incident, it took place yesterday morning. Thursday, October 26, about minutes after 9 o'clock. It took place at the Dyer Square in the parish of Hanover. We are learning that that guy on your screen, his name is Andre Miller, but he was popularly known as Scully. Scully was born on April 5, 1991, 32 years old, and he was living at Blenheim District in the parish of Hanover. We are told that Scully, he and other persons, they were standing in a shop at the Dyer Square when a lone hoodlum entered the shop. The hoodlum, he pulled a gun, put it to Scully's head and squeezed. Scully, he fell to the ground and the hoodlum, he ended up pumping four more bullets into Scully's body. The hoodlum, he then ran out of the shop and he and his crony, they made good their escape on a burgundy Cabra CG150 motorcycle. Scully, he ended up dying on the spot. We are told that when the police processed this crime scene, five 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. So, after the killing of Scully, 
intelligence was passed on very fast. Now, I told you that the hoodlums, they escaped on a Burgundy Cabra CG150 motorcycle. A team of police officers attached to the Kingsville Police Station. They were out on patrol when they received the intelligence. The officers, they did not hesitate. They drove at a fast speed to where it is likely that the hoodlums would be exiting. On reaching a district named Prospect District, about four to five miles from where Scully was killed, the officers, they spotted a Burgundy CG150 motorcycle. And by now, you should know that police officers intercepting a motorcycle is not as easy as it sounds. However, the police officers, they intercepted this bike. The two hoodlums who ran the bike, they managed to jump off it and ran. The police officers chased them and managed to hold on to one of the hoodlums. He was searched and bingo. One Glock 99mm pistol with the serial number intact, affixed with a magazine containing two live rounds, was taken from his waistband. That guy, he was taken into police custody and he is suspected to be the hitman who killed Scully. Now, I know his current name but I can't release it as yet because I don't want to interfere with police investigation. But he is 35 years old and he's employed to the Princess Hotel. That hotel that is under construction in the Green Island area. We are told that this guy, he's employed as a steel man. He's from the Hall Crescent Kingston 8 area. Now, as soon as more information becomes available, I'll be sharing it with you. But this is what happens when the police and citizens work together. Intelligencers, big up on yourself. And Kingsville Police. Yeah, man, Corporal, you and your team. Job well done. So, let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? Touch it from now because when I start the next story, I'm not going to stop. I don't want to break. So, if you are not touch it yet, <laughs> touch it from now. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, hit on the subscribe button as also. Hit on the notification bell. Then click all so that whenever we drop a new video, you will be one of the first to be notified. Now, in this story, I'm going to go back and give you some exclusive information. If you have been around on the channel for a while now, you might have heard some of this before. The information we are getting is that this all started because of scamming money. We have seen this so many times. Good friends became enemies because of scamming money. But before I go into the details, I want to address something. I want to address something. I posted that on your screen with the caption on my Facebook page this morning. The caption reads, He was once listed on the Westmoreland Police most wanted list. He was on bail for murder. He and his 22-year-old girlfriend were shot and killed at Megatop in St. James yesterday. More details soon on Papai News links, blah, blah, blah. You know the rest. Now, a female, she's a cousin of the guy who was killed. She has been all over the page trying to justify his actions. She has also accused me of chatting too much, every and telling lies. If you look on your screen, there are two of the many posts that this female made. She said he wasn't on any wanted list. He was attacked and he killed one of the gunmen. She went on to say he went straight to the police. <laughs> she also said, just imagine you're at your house and three gunmen came to kill you and you defend yourself killing one. How that make you a wanted man? These people just grieve me. He wasn't a bad man. So here is what I want you to do. 
listen to what happened and see if this cousin is speaking the truth. Listen carefully. On the early morning of Tuesday, June 16, 2020, about 7.30, that guy on your screen, his name is Patrick Parker, but he was popularly known as Nahim or Dog. Nahim, he was celebrating his birthday on that same day. Nahim was born on June 16, 1990, and he lived at Waterworks in the parish of Westmoreland. Now, we are told that Nahim, he had gone to a place named Nagotown in the same Withan police area to visit some relatives. One of his nephews was also at the house. There is the nephew on your screen. His name is Odev Coote, but he was popularly known as Dardaman. Dardaman was 18 years old at the time. Now, while Nahim was in his relative's yard at Nagotown, he was approached by that guy on your screen. His name is Odin Smith, but he was popularly known as Punts or Damian. Punts was born on December 16, 1993, and he was living at Lago District in the CM Withern Police area in the parish of Westmoreland. It is said that Punts, he brandished a gun and he opened gunfire, hitting Nahim all over his body. Nahim fell to the ground. Now, Dardaman, the nephew, he was inside the house and he heard the explosion and he heard his uncle bawling out. It is said that Dardaman, he ran outside only to see Punts standing over his uncle, pumping bullets into his body. Dardaman, he picked up some stones and he threw them at Punts. Punts turned around and he saw Dardaman and opened gunfire at him. Dardaman ran off and Punts chased him, still firing shots at him. Dardaman, he was not hit and Punts, he made good his escape. Nahim, he died as a result. So Punts, he was now wanted by the police and he was on the run for over three full weeks. Him not just going to the police right away. Damn lie. In fact, at one stage, the police carried out a raid at that cousin's house because the information was that she was hiding him in the house. Got it? So, a little bit over three weeks after Punce killed Nahim, he was arrested and charged by the police for murder and shooting at Dardaman. Punce, he went to court and one month later, in August 2020, he was offered bail by the courts. Now, a condition of Punce bail is that he should reside elsewhere, not at Shrewsbury Lagood, where he is from, and where it is alleged that he had killed Nahim. Punce, he took up his bail and he went to live in the parish of St. James. Now, I will soon be telling you more about Punce because the questions are, was Punce behaving himself in St. James? And what about the murder charge that he was facing? So remember that Dardaman, he saw Punce killed his uncle. Dardaman, he had vowed to avenge his uncle's death, but Punce was no longer living in the area. Now, do you remember the date that Dardaman's uncle, Nahim, was killed? Tuesday. June 16, 2020. That day was also his birthday. That guy on your screen. His name is Andre Smith, but he was popularly known as Bobo or Twitch. Bobo, he was born on January 12, 1987, and he was a bike taxi operator. He lived at Shrewsbury Lagood. Now, Bobo. He was Odean Smith, also known as Punce, or Damian's brother. Got it? So on Wednesday, June 16, 2021, at minutes to 10 o'clock, exactly one year to the day when Punce 
killed Dardaman's uncle, Naeem, and fired at Dardaman. Bobo, he was at his home when he received a phone call. As a result of this phone call, he jumped on his bike and he told family members that he was going to pick up someone at Roaring River. Remember that Bobo, he was a bike taxi operator, but that call was a setup. The call was orchestrated by Dardaman and his cronies. Bobo, he rode out and he was ambushed, shot and killed. Dardaman, he went on to commit many more mayhems in the area. So he was placed on the Westmoreland Police most wanted list. Dardaman, he was eventually shot and killed in a confrontation with the police on Thursday, January 13, 2022, shortly after 12 midday at the Shrewsbury Housing Scheme in the parish of Westmoreland. About two hours after Dardaman was killed, his cronies attacked and shot up Bobo and Poon's mother and sister in a shop at Shrewsbury Lagood. Luckily, they survived. So, Poons, he was living at Flower Hill in the parish of St. James. And our information is that whilst he was living there, he was involved in hoodlums activities in the area. Word on the street is that he was implicated in the killing of a guy named Brenton Richards, but he was popularly known as Brenty. Brenty was born on July 26, 1992, and he lived at Haslian in the South Spring area of St. James. Brenty, he was shot and killed Sunday afternoon, September 3, about 2 o'clock. He was in the Palmer's Lawn area of Flower Hill when he was attacked, shot and killed by hoodlums. Punce, he was supposed to go back to court in two weeks' time on November 9, read the killing of Naheem, but that will not be because yesterday afternoon, Thursday, October 26, about 1.30, Punce, he was in a grey 2010 Toyota Wish motor car. Now, that motor car, it is a taxi and it was travelling from Flower Hill to Montego Bay. Also in the taxi was the driver and Two other passengers. One of the passengers was Poon's girlfriend. There she is on your screen. Her name is Imani Jarrett, but she was popularly known as Primi. She was born on May 14, 2001, 22 years old, and she lived in the Refuge Lane, Flower Hill area. So the taxi, it was going towards Montego Bay, but on reaching in the vicinity of the Salt Spring Primary and Infant School, there is a speed bump. The driver, he slowed down to go over the speed bump when five hoodlums approached the vehicle and ordered the occupants in the vehicle. Nobody move. Punts and Premi. They knew what's up. So, both of them, they ran out of the car. The hoodlums chased them and opened gunfire at them, hitting them all over their bodies. The driver, he sped away, but the hoodlums, they did not care because they got who they wanted. Both Primi and Punts, they ended up dying on the spot. The police, they were called and when they processed this crime scene, 25 9mm spent shells and 8 5.56 spent shells were recovered from the scene. Now, can you imagine how traumatized those kids who were in class were? Over 30 bullets were fired. We are told that the car, the taxi, also received some gunshot damage. And this next incident, we are getting information that it was an act of reprisal. It is being said that cronies of Poons, they carried out this mayhem. That man on your screen, his name is Anthony Forbes, but he was popularly known as Platop or Gummy. Earlier this month, on October 8th, Gummy, he celebrated his 47th birthday and he lived in the Flower Hill area of St. James. Gummy and his 15-year-old son, they were at home when hoodlums, 
armed with AK-47 rifles and 9mm pistols. They went there and kicked off their front door. The hoodlums, they opened gunfire at the father and son. The son, he received a gunshot wound to his right knee, whilst his father, he received gunshot wounds to his upper body. The hoodlums, they then made good their escape. Gummy, he ended up dying on the spot, whilst his son, he was rushed to a nearby hospital where he was treated and admitted. We are told that when the police processed this crime scene, three 9mm spent shells and four 7.62 spent shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend about Popeye News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Quick Silver Sin. Chop, chop. 